Many thanks for joining us on Ebru African News this afternoon. It is the 26th of February 2014 and I'm Kamene Goro. Now we start off our bulletin with matters to do with the Central African Republic where France's foreign minister has said that there would be a genocide raging in the country if Paris had not sent in troops. Now this came just hours before the parliament voted to extend the military mission. The issue has divided French lawmakers, but the vote to extend Operation Sangaris, whose mandate is due to expire in April, is expected to pass easily in both houses. The number of French peacekeepers is expected to rise from 1,600 to 2,000 to support a 6,000-strong African Union force. The European Union plans to send 1,000 troops to the country. A French minister said the deployment would start next month. Several international officials, including Adama Dieng, the UN advisor on the prevention of genocide, had warned last year that the country risked descending into genocide. That sparked deadly violence between the Christians and Muslims that has uprooted a million people out of a population of 4.6 million. Meanwhile, France has drawn up a list of eight citizens of Central African Republic, including former President Francois Bozizé, on whom it believes the United Nations should impose sanctions. Relief organizations have warned that the flight of Muslims, who controlled a large share of trade and farming, could exacerbate a major food crisis in what was already one of the world's poorest countries before the conflict. Ibrahim Maleb, who was appointed as Egypt's new prime minister after the resignation of the cabinet, says that he will work to crush terrorism and pave the way for investment and the return of tourism. Outgoing Egyptian housing minister Ibrahim Maleb promised to eradicate the increasing militant violence that has rocked the country upon his appointment as the new prime minister. Speaking after his appointment by Adli Mansour, Maleb said he hoped improved security will lead to economic recovery. Security is on the top of the list. Security and stability everywhere in the nation. Also preventing terrorism because this will pave the way to investments and the return of tourism. The new prime minister hopes to form his government within three or four days. Regarding the time period of appointing a new cabinet, it will be in the shortest time period possible as per the orders of the Honorable President. As I told you, we do not have to waste time. We are in a decisive moment, God willing, three to four days. He said his government would work to provide secure climate for a presidential election, but also urged patients from a population desperate for economic improvement. Mahleb is a civil engineer who was formerly the head of Egypt's biggest construction firms. Thousands of Moroccans protested outside the French embassy against comments about the kingdom attributed to a senior French official as relations between the normally close allies cooled. The diplomatic row prompted President Francois Hollande to call the king who is currently touring West Africa to reassure him of France's constant friendship. Several thousand people demonstrated outside the French embassy waving Moroccan flags, holding up pictures of King Mohammed VI and chanting patriotic slogans. The last statements of the French ambassador to the United States is why we as an association came here to rebut to tell France and its citizens and the French government that Morocco will not accept to dirty its dignity. Morocco, which has strong commercial and cultural ties with its former colonial ruler, has already reacted furiously to the announcement last Thursday of two lawsuits filed by an NGO in Paris accusing Moroccan intelligence chief Abdilatif Hamouchi of complicity in torture. In the name of free Moroccans, we demand that the French embassy in the United States apologize for the error made by the French ambassador to the United States. Moroccan Interior Minister Mustafa Khalif described the allegation comments by France's UN envoy as a scandalous and unacceptable, saying they had all Moroccans. 
President Francois Hollande called the killing on Monday to dispel the misunderstandings and understand his desire to strengthen ties. Hollande's intervention came after Morocco unilaterally postponed a visit by environmentalist Nicolas Hulot, the president's special envoy for the protection of the planet, who had been due to arrive on Monday. Our presence here is the outcome of statements by a French diplomatic envoy in Washington, where he described Morocco in a very aggressive way and deeply hurt French-Moroccan relations. Rabat summoned the French ambassador on Friday to reject the torture allegations and vigorously protest the lawsuit against Hamouchi, who was accompanying the interior minister on a visit to Paris on the day they were announced. Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta is in South Sudan for a state visit as part of his efforts to bring peace to the nation. Now this follows yesterday's National Security Council meeting that recommended the deployment of KDF soldiers to South Sudan. The president left the JKIA this morning for the trip and is expected back in the evening. Yesterday, the National Security Council recommended the deployment of an additional 310 troops to South Sudan. Now, Kenya had deployed troops to South Sudan last year to evacuate Kenyan nationals who were stranded in the country. The council noted that the additional deployment is necessary in order to increase the current strength to 1,000 troops. Ghana's president was yesterday heckled by opposition lawmakers while he outlined plans to boost the country's economy as a free-falling currency sparks frustration over living costs. John Dramani Mahama was repeatedly shouted down by detractors as he unveiled proposals to diversify the economy from an over-reliance on gold, cocoa and oil exports by boosting local manufacturing. Among his proposals were new sugar mills and a factory to produce the jute sacks to hold cocoa, as well as a government pledge to back Ghanaian farmers and the fishing industry. <laughs> Mahama's intervention was the latest in a series of measures to show up the once buoyant economy and to reverse the slide of the shady, which has increased the price of everything from eggs to fuel. <laughs> Analysts attribute the fall to a high deficit, a 28% decline in the gold price, and the withdrawal of stimulus measures by the U.S. Federal Reserve that has hit emerging market currencies worldwide. Experts have also warned that Mahama's reforms must tackle structural issues such as ballooning deficits if the country is to deliver on its promise as the star of West Africa. Like many African countries, Ghana struggles with a bloated and inefficient public sector. The government has to shell out nearly 12% of total economic output, 75% of all oil revenue on the wage bill. Ghana has a young population and is eyeing a ramping up of oil production above the current 100,000 barrels per day output once infrastructure improvements are made. As fighting rages on in Syria, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon criticizes the Syrian government for delaying humanitarian access. As rockets fly across the Syrian battlefield, a civil war approaches its third anniversary. In new amateur video, rebels appear in firefights with government forces in rural Damascus. Other video purports to show rebels regaining important ground. Reuters cannot independently verify the videos, which were posted on social media websites. The fighting comes as the United Nations demands more unfettered access to the country. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. I call on the Syrian government to authorize more humanitarian staff and partners to work in Syria. It is not credible to cite bureaucratic procedures as reasons for delay when it is the government itself that controls those procedures. More than 136,000 have been killed in the fighting, which has forced half the population to flee from their homes. The UN says nearly 4.3 million children have been affected. Children have been killed, arrested, abducted, 
tortured, mutilated, sexually abused, and recruited by armed groups. They have been used as human shields. They are malnourished. Syria is in the danger of losing a generation of its children. The Security Council passed a resolution this past weekend demanding greater access, but it's unknown what consequences Syria will face if the government does not comply. The mainly Russian-speaking territory of Crimea in Ukraine has become a topic of intense discussion following recent political upheaval that has rocked the country with the residents of Crimea fearing reprisal due to their strong Russian ties. Russia's Black Sea Fleet is on the move in Ukraine. Soldiers are protecting Russian properties in Crimea, where the fleet is based. Fleet officials also fear reprisals against the 60,000 Russian-speaking Ukrainians and Russian nationals living in Sevastopol, Ukraine. Some residents there are signing up for self-defense groups. The fear of reprisals stems from the geopolitical nature of the country. People in the Russian-speaking East tend to sympathize with Moscow, which supported the recently ousted President Viktor Yanukovych. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian-speaking West favors greater independence from Russia. Ukraine's parliament has already raised concerns about signs of separatism. A National Security Council meeting was held Tuesday to address the concerns. Hundreds of protesters took to the streets and clashed with police in Istanbul and Ankara to denounce voice recordings suggesting that Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan warned his son to hide large sums of money before police raids in a graft inquiry that reached into government. Now, Erdogan's office had dismissed the voice recordings as fake and completely untrue. <laughs> The protests came as a judge in Turkey launched investigations into the leaked recordings purportedly catching the Turkish Prime Minister discussing how to hide large sums of money with his son. The inquiry was launched on Tuesday, a day after the tape was dismissed by the office of Raib Tayyip Erdogan as a dirty fabrication, but opposition parties have called on the government to resign. It is not clear if the probe initiated by the chief prosecutor on Tuesday was determined authentically or whether a possible criminal act had been committed by Erdogan. The phone conversations which circulated on the internet on Monday allegedly revealed Erdogan asking his son Bilal to turn millions of dollars into cash stashed at several houses in Tuzero. <laughs> Social media and video sharing sites have been awash with leaked recordings presented as evidence of wrongdoing. Erdogan supporters say the graft investigation was contrived by a U.S. based cleric with influence in police and judiciary in a bid to unseat him ahead of elections this year. The cleric Fethullah Gulen has denied the involvement. Paralympic champion Oscar Pistorius, who went from golden boy to murder suspect on Valentine's Day last year, is due to face trial for killing his girlfriend. Now, a South African judge ruled that the murder trial of the Olympic and track star will be televised. A South African judge has ruled that the murder trial of Oscar Pistorius will be televised to the world. The 27-year-old Olympic and Paralympic athlete, a double amputee commonly referred to as Blade Runner, has admitted to shooting his girlfriend, model Riva Steenkamp, at his Pretoria home on Valentine's Day of last year. But he also said that it was a terrible accident and that he had mistaken her for an intruder. A representative from Prime Media Broadcasting called the decision to televise the trial a victory. And we believe the decision today will go a long way in bringing the, the, the trial not only to the people of South Africa but people across the world. We know that the Oscar trial has interest in every corner of the world and uh, come Monday we, we, ensure, we, will, sure, we will ensure that uh, the sound and the visuals are made available and uh, we believe it's a beginning for, for our courts to really change their mindset. So this is a victory, it's a real victory for, for our courts and the people of South Africa. The Paralympians' legal team opposed broadcasting the trial on the basis that it would be intrusive. 
but local media argue that it ought to be televised under the freedom of information principles of the country's constitution. The trial is slated to begin March 3rd. That story wraps up our bulletin for you this afternoon. Join me at 9 p.m. for our primetime bulletin and a more in-depth analysis on what's happening in the world today. Many thanks for your absolutely scintillating company. I'm Kamen Agaro and do have yourself a lovely afternoon. New Line Limited, your one-stop shop for elegant and comfortable office furniture. New Line responds to your expectations for office furniture in a modern language. We offer a five-year warranty period including unit transfers within Nairobi. For more information, visit our showroom at Chester House, Loiter Street, Nairobi. New Line Limited, your success partner. Makeup. Does your exterior complement your interior? Everyone needs a home that is inspired by nature. At Yenbo Limited, we offer durable, energy efficient, and affordable UPVC windows in attractive colors. Visit us at Wall Street Business Park of Mombasa Road. Yenbo UPVC windows. Your desire, our child. New Line Limited, we offer current, stylish, state-of-the-art kitchen and wardrobe appliances tailored to suit your preference. We offer unit transfers within Nairobi. Let your kitchen stand out today by visiting us at Chester House, Loiter Street. Your comfort and satisfaction comes first. Flomart, professional makeup. 